Hello, men. It's Chad Wilson here, your men's minister there at First Congress. Thank you for joining us this week in session three. We're going to be looking at a man in his mind and working through the 10 week study that we have for chose to work through here. We're using real momentum, 10 lessons to help men win. And we're on, like I said, we're on session three here. Um, hopefully, you have watched or was a part of the session one with JMO of Man and a Personal Revival. He, he really brought a good word on Man Church that night on Thursday. I uh, encourage you, if you didn't hear that, to go back and listen to that message. Uh, last week, Jeff Riley, Brother Jeff, brought uh, session two, which is a man in his path, and uh, really brought out um, the man and his path and his ways and just really brought us um, to take a look at where we're going and he shared last week of where we're looking is usually where we're going so uh, that made a pretty good a big impact on me so wherever you're looking yes where, where we're leading you so let's let's now we're in session three a man in his mind so let's direct our eyes on him and see where he's leading us to go out so uh, we're on session three. Like I say, we'll be in uh, Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Um, I'll share a, a note here that I found on the course Google Internet. Uh, was just messing around. And, and on average, a man makes 35,000 decisions a day. I'll say that again. And on average, a man makes 35,000 decisions in a day. And uh, when I heard that, I was like, holy smokes, that, that's, that's a bunch. I didn't realize that. I just never thought that. So, uh, wow, you know, if, you, if you're like me, you're making, on average, 35,000 decisions a day. Uh, no wonder your brain's tired at the end of the day and when you lay down to, to rest. It's, it's been working all day, but, but it can work uh, for us or it can work against us. And, and those uh, 35,000 decisions can shape us, mold us, um, those around us can impact those. So we're gonna put this at a forefront. Keith did a really good job of, of putting this at a forefront for men to really think about a man in his mind and controlling his thoughts and being disciplined in the, in the things of the Lord. So uh, let me pray and we'll get into, I, we'll start the lesson. I hope you got your book here again and we'll work through this together. So Lord, I thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this uh, lesson that you've laid on Keith's heart that we can use to help men win. Father, I thank you for Keith Boggs and his real momentum and what a blessing uh, he's been to me and, and this men's ministry. Father, I thank you for JMO and his willingness to lead out in this, Father. He, he's, um, as we, he shepherds the flock, Father. He, he has men on his heart. Father, I ask that you bless him and guide and direct him in those things. I, I think, again, thank you for his servant heart. His discipleship heart, Father. Uh, I ask that you uh, continue to keep your hand on him and anoint him in a way as he leads us, Father, that um, that you would use him um, to bring your word to us and it would lead, guide, and direct all of us, Father. Uh, thank you again for the study. Thank you again for this time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, as we start, like I said, we're in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, the scripture's in your book there. And uh, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Uh, in your book there, um, that next statement, I don't know about you, but... Um, it was, what are you thinking? Have you lost your mind? And I don't know if you were like me. Uh, I heard that quite a bit when I, was, when I was a young boy. You know, what were you thinking? Have you lost your mind? And uh, that, was, that was pretty much correction. You know, after that, it was, it was probably not going to be a good outcome. Uh, there was discipline involved. But, but so, so as we work through this, we're going to think, what, what are we thinking? Have we lost our minds? Have we, we let our mind go in a way 
that it should not have gone, should be going. Uh, A.W. Tozer shares, <clears throat> what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What is, comes into our minds when we think about God is the more, most important thing about us. And that's, that's a great statement there. And what we think about God and, and, and his word is the most important thing. And that's a great statement there. So the next statement here, you can't, do any, you can't do something new and exciting if you force yourself to stay in the same old rut. Don't just work harder at the same old thing. Make a change. Think differently. Repent. Uh, this statement really, uh, man, it hit home with me uh, this week. And I think we're in unprecedented times if you talk to to, to older men and men of my age and, and even younger men, uh, the times that we're in, um, it's just we've never seen this before. The, the conflict, the, the uh, confusion, um, it's, but I, I, I really, I really do think, that, you know, the Lord, you know, these are unprecedented times, but of course, unprecedented times creates unprecedented opportunities. So I really do feel that God is really doing a new work in his church, just as Isaiah said, that new things are springing forth. And I'm excited about what he's doing in the church. I know it's, it's, it's hard right now. It's hard for us to meet. We can't meet. But, but I, I really do believe that, that God is pulling uh, his church out of the rut and uh, praying that he gets us out of the rut and we stay out of the rut and we become uh, more effective for his kingdom and clear up the confusion and the what's going on right now in culture so it, it really is so and, and and being in a rut is really really bad um i tell you i think satan really wants a christian to stay in a place of comfort and complacency. And I say that because when we're in a position, even myself, in a, in a, in a position of comfort or complacency, we tend to pull back. We tend to, things are going well. We tend to, everything's all right. Everybody's got it handled, you know, we're not challenged in anything. We're not testing our faith. You know, there's no adversity there. Uh, I think that's a, that's a dangerous place for us to be as a Christian just due to the fact that we're not crying out to the Lord. And, and I think in this adversity of, of, of what we're going through that all of our calendars have been wiped clean. The church's calendars, our personal calendars, all of that has just been wiped clean. And it's just now the only thing that we have to focus on is him. And we're out of our comfort and we're out of our complacency. And we're having to look to do things in a new way, to reach people in a different way, to uh, assemble in a different way. And I think it's, um, it's challenged us and, and now we're seeking the Lord What's our next step? You know, I think he's he's asked just telling us to take a step and listen to him. You know, and as we as we do that as a church, you know, pray for him to uh, guide and direct us of where he wants his church to be. You know, this is his church. Where, where does he want his church to be? And comfort and complacency is not not a good place to be. Um, when we're uncomfortable and we're having to do new things, um, we really have to, to listen and give an ear to him. So, so uh, like I said, he, he, I, I really think he's doing a, the work in, in and through our church, his church right now, our church, his church, First Conyers, and his church overall. But, but we're, we're coming back to the basics of, of men, you know, uh, relationship with the Lord, I believe 
right now more than ever, God is calling men back to him and he is using other men in studies like this to, to point us back to him and lead and guide and direct us and and just we be obedient to what he's doing through in and through us. So um so mindset, uh the number one in your blank there on your in your in our workbook is mindset. And in that blank you can fill in a, a mindset. What is a mindset? It's a state of mind, a frame of mind, a way of thinking, an attitude. State of mind, frame of mind, way of thinking, attitude. Uh, I like, uh, we didn't, as a man, we didn't get to finish the, the better man study together as JMO was leading, but uh, when I worked through it this last time uh, in Better Man, JP Pacluda, in the last session there, I'd, be, I'd challenge you to go back and listen to the, the last three sessions there that we didn't get to work through. But the last session there on Better Man, uh, JP shared a story of the undercover boss. Uh, there was a, a story on there about a, a young man that I believe it was 7-Eleven where the guy worked and uh, how his attitude was just so above anybody else's and what such good mindset and a frame of mind that he had when he was just, you know, a guy just delivering uh, materials to the store, you know, and the, uh, the undercover boss was riding along with him and it pressed him so much, it made so much of an impact on him, he gave him his own store. And, and after that, he, he, you know, that's, he took ownership of that store and he just saw it as an opportunity to be able to bless those that came in there. It was, it was a ministry for him. And what, what a great mindset, what a great picture that was of the mindset of, of how it, impact, it can impact others. Our attitudes, our, our actions, our frame of mind, the way we react, it just it has impact on others and it can be a positive impact or a negative impact. But, but when you see the positive impact like you did uh, in that story, it's just, man, it just it warms your heart and it really just brings to mind of, of how we react to others really does matter and what our frame of mind is. So I, I'll ask now, I, I know um, what comes to mind when you think about church. I challenge you guys, you know, again, what, what comes to mind when you think about church? I know um, my mindset has changed about church. Um, so I'll challenge you. What comes to mind when you think about church? Has has going through this adversity, going through this difficulty of pushing us out of our comfort and complacency, has it changed your mind about church? And you know, used to used to think it was, um, you know, come on Sunday mornings, come on Wednesday evenings, and serve on every committee that you could serve on and keep busy, and that's what church was. But uh, church is more than that. Church is, um, church is where we equip the next generation, where, where we come together as a, an assembly of believers, and there's so much more to it than just that. And I, I had to get out of that mindset. So I challenge you today and ask you that question. What comes to mind when you think about church? So, And then the next in our book there, Ken Blanchard made this statement. If you want to go to places you've never been before, you have to to think in ways you have never thought before. If you want to go places you've never been before, you have to think in ways you have never thought before. And that's just pushing ourselves to, to think outside the box. You know, I think a lot of times we we as Christians, we, we like our little box. I mean, I like my little box and, 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 and it's easy in the little box and it's comfortable, and but we need to think outside the box and, and challenge ourselves a lot of times on uh, number two in your workbook there it says there are thoughts that develop my mind producing wisdom faith and blessing there are thoughts that develop my mind producing wisdom faith and blessing there are thoughts that dominate my mind producing worry fear and bondage there are thoughts that dominate my mind producing worry fear and 
in bondage. So there's thoughts that develop your mind. There are thoughts that dominate your mind. So we need to keep that in front of us and think of that. So in your first uh, bullet point there uh, of thinking, it says think clearly. We're going to look at two different thought processes, a biblical perspective and a theological position. As a man, as thinking clearly, we just need to make sure we have a biblical perspective and know our theological position. So uh, 2 Timothy 1 through 7. Uh, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. This scripture here really, I really... Is, is one of my favorite scriptures I, I, in 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 a, in a battle of your mind when we we do have the fear that we go back to when we acknowledge as Jesus as our Lord and we accept him as our Savior when we're we're born again as scripture says uh, at that time we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and that's the power we receive that power and we have to go back and realize we have power over um, fear. He defeated fear. So we, so going back and really reading this scripture, when you're when fear does start creeping in, we have the power to defeat it. It's been defeated. The the same power that resurrected Christ, the Holy Spirit, we have living in us. And we can overcome those things. And we just have to put that, our mind at ease and use scripture, let, let bathe in it and just remind Satan that he's a defeated foe because that's what fear is. It's not, fear is not of God, fear is of Satan. So number five there, every thought you have shapes your life. Every thought you have shapes your life. That, and that, there again, our thinking navigates where we go, how we react. Um, our mindset, it just shapes how we live. Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. In parentheses here, the, it says, exercise the mind, interest oneself, savor, you know, uh, exercise your mind on the things of the Lord, His Scripture. And, and that very first word there, let, we have to be willing to let the Lord do a work in us. We have to be willing to let the Holy Spirit uh, guide and direct us in, in all we do. And let is a word of transforming faith. To allow, choose, give me permission, let allows, chooses, let allows, chooses, gives permission to the total love and power of the Creator. We have to let the Word change us. We have to let the Holy Spirit change us. We have to be willing to listen and, and surrender. The let part is surrendering to God's Word, to His Holy Spirit, and let Him mold and make us into what He wants us to be. Philippians 2.5 let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Again, Philippians 2, 5, let. We must let him in to do a new work in us, to, do a, to have a renewed mind, to uh, walk in him each day. And that, that's daily, a daily battle that we face is letting him be Lord over us. Uh, number six there. Look at the biblical perspective. Uh, the biblical perspective. Second Timothy three sixteen through seven. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The biblical perspective, knowing that how we are equipped or what we should run all of our decisions through or all of our thinking, all of our thoughts is, is through those biblical perspectives of that scripture is inspired by God. 
Scripture is true. Scripture is what molds and makes us. Scripture is what changes us. Uh, Jamo says all the time, I love, the only thing that changes us is Scripture, God's Word, and the Holy Spirit. And that what truly, truly changes a man and his, and his thinking and his thought process. And then the second is uh, the theological position. Theological position. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, and then 10 through 11. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it so our theological position there it talks about that in Isaiah in uh, this, this, this statement here too often when it comes to the things of God we allow someone else to do our thinking for us and that leads us down a path of difficulty that was, that was a great statement, and it really got me thinking there. Um, too often, I think we let other things allow other things influence to make decisions. I was watched a Netflix um, show there it was called social dilemma and it was it was a talking about the social media and and what it what it's doing and how it's affecting culture and it was really eye-opening and the use of you know ai artificial intelligence and how they use that to prompt people to keep them uh, you know sucked into the, the the social aspect of it and how they work to they just throw tidbits out there to see see what you get, see what you bite on, and then they continue to use that, you know, to keep your mind, you know, uh, focused on, you know, a social media platform or, you know, their own agenda, wh whatever that may be, whatever, to however you think. But, but the artificial intelligence really, really woke me up and was thinking that um, we're just not thinking for ourselves and we're getting getting to that point and they were talking about artificial in, you know, in, intelligence does not know truth so it knows what's trending it knows so it does not know absolute truth and absolute truth is God's word so so we have to be very careful in in culture and letting those things uh, guide our thoughts or guide our decisions or guide the way that we uh, think and that we should be grounded in God's word, have that theological position, that knowing that that's what changes us, that's what we need to turn to, that's that's what needs to continue to work in our mind, and how we should think that way in that theological position. So, so I just wanted to share that with you. It just it just really woke woke me up, and in this next generation, how um, it, it's so easy just to not really even have to think you can just google or look online or or then you hear someone else uh, make a you know a point of view that that sways them in a way and they're not making their own decisions and it's not you know grounded in god's word so taking a theological position is is very key in making decisions and in, in, in a man in his mind so the next there uh, number two, think carefully. And then we'll look at demonic reasoning versus divine revelation. Those two, two differences, demonic reasoning and divine re revelation. Uh, Romans 2, excuse me, Romans 12, 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed 
to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but I think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So, therefore, be conformed. Do not be conformed to the world. Be transformed, not conformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, and what transforms us by the renewing of our mind is God's Word. And knowing our position with God and with others um, helps us think carefully. And a lot of times men just want to try to position themselves, you know, higher than other men. It's almost like a competition to of sorts. And that's not what it's about. You know, every man is uh, equal in the eyes of God. And it's not it's not a competition. It's it's we think of ourselves humbly and soberly and we deal with each other in that manner that we're not above anybody else. We, we are humbly made in the likeness of God. And that's, that's a, to think carefully to put our, is to put ourselves in the correct position uh, with those, with, with God and with others. In Proverbs, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So there again, think carefully. Know where your position is. Know where your position is with God. You know, know you're you're no better than other men. Do not try to put yourself above others. Think humbly, soberly. And then uh number nine, the last point there, think correctly. Think correctly. Philippians four eight. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. What a great scripture. Um, a lot of times um, we have those feelings or thinking of you know, fear and, and what if this, what if that, and a good catalyst is to read Philippians 4 8. Is it is it good report? Is it of any virtue? You know, it is it glorifying God? Is is it demonic reasoning or divine revelation? You know, that's that's where we have to make those decisions in our mind as we think. Number ten in your book there. Uh, thoughts that keep me close, true, noble, honest, just. Thoughts that keep me close, true, noble, honest, just. Thoughts that keep me clean, pure, lovely, good report. Thoughts that keep me clean, pure, lovely, good report. So think carefully. Think anything praiseworthy. Think um, clean thoughts. Take your mind to clean thoughts. Uh, meditate. Meditate on God's Word. Meditate on what His Word and His um, truths that battles, you know, Satan that we use as a, um, a shield of faith to deflect those flaming arrows, arrows from Satan to that, you know, when we, we do think fear is not of God. So think pure, lovely, good report. Um, nobody changes until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Nobody changes until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. What a great statement. Um, 
you know, we just, in our redundancy, just, we want, we want to change. We just, we're stuck and we, we just, you know, it's hard to get out of the rut. So we just, what do we look to? We look toward God's word and, and him equipping us and the Holy Spirit to move us in a way that we can, and the things that, that keeps us there is a, is a lack of forgiveness on our part. It, it, the hardest thing a person to forgive a lot of times is ourself. Uh, we've got to get past that forgiveness on our part. Uh, the failures that we have, the failures of our part, that, that just, the pain and of failures that, you know, uh, God's in the restoration business. And, you know, no, nothing's too broke that he can't fix. So there's, there's maybe failures in your past, but God can, can heal those things. God can get you through those things. Um, we just have to get past them ourselves. And then a lack of focus on our part uh, kind of keeps us in a, in a rut. When we, when we don't focus on God's Word or focus of the things of His kingdom, our, our thinking gets off track. And we just need to get right back, get our focus back on, on what's true. So in our book, uh, one Christian writer wrote, I'd like to, to share this. It says, for most of life, for, first, for most of my life, I didn't think about what I was thinking about. I simply thought whatever fell into my head. I had no revelation that Satan could inject thoughts into my mind. Much of what was in my head was either lies that Satan was telling me or just plain nonsense, things that really were not worth spending my time thinking about. The devil was controlling my life because he was controlling my thoughts. So, there again, practicing uh, a man in his mind, practicing controlling your thoughts. It's an exercise. It's a discipline. Um, you know, I've, I've battled this. It's just, we just plain nonsense in our head that we just have to drive out. That's, that's not of God. That clears our thinking, clears our thoughts that we focus back on him. It's easily to get distracted when all those things are just filling our heads with just junk. And there's a lot of it now, and, and we just have to be sure that we have to just push those things out and renew our mind each day to, to Him and His words. Uh, Ephesians 3, 14 through 19 is a, is a verse here that uh, I'll share these verses with you. And, I, if you. and they're in your book. If you'll just take a look and, and in your private praise and prayer time, uh, go back and read these because this, this really helps with your thinking. It will help battle those um, fear. It will help you get through that nonsense. But these are very good scriptures that, that can help in those battles. So Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. Job 37, 14. Hebrews 12, 3. 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. And then in your book there, there's um, um, a chart that has demonic reasoning and divine revelation there. And we're going to look through the difference between that. What What is the direct difference between a demonic reasoning and what is the divine revelation? So if you got your book there, we'll fill those out. But I'll read uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 before we get into that. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. So taking every thought captive, we let Christ take every thought captive because there's 35,000, as we, I shared with you earlier, 35,000 decisions in a day. That's a lot of thoughts to have to take captive. So uh, every thought into captivity. So there, there again on your uh, workbook there, we have the, the, the chart. Uh, demonic reasoning, the first one's bondage. In divine revelation, it's blessing. Demonic reasoning, worry. Divine revelation, worship. Demonic reasoning, fear. Divine revelation, faith. Demonic reasoning, darkness. Divine revelation, light. 
demonic reasoning, death, divine revelation, life, demonic reasoning, jealous spirit, divine revelation, joyful spirit, demonic reasoning, skeptical, divine revelation, supernatural, demonic reasoning, Satan, divine revelation, Savior. And the last one, demonic reasoning, self, divine revelation, Scripture. Psalms 144, 3 through 5. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him, or the son of man that you are mindful of him? Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heart, bow down your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Another scripture, John 9, 4. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it's day, the night cometh, when no man can work. Let's pray in just challenge ourselves I will do a new thing let that to be our prayer I, I will do a new thing and this statement here as we as we wrap up too many people expect little ask for little work for little dream of little pray for little receive little God came Jesus came that we would have life and have it abundantly and through the power of the Holy Spirit he, he, he blesses us and wants to bless us and he wants us to give big things not so much monetarily a lot of times but um, I think we just need to trust the Holy Spirit to work in and, the, and through us and listen to him as we work to do a new thing work to do a new thing uh, last comment there A.W. Tozer again we'll share this I shared it in the beginning I'll share it again what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us now uh, again let me share this scripture with you and you can read it on your, on your private time Deuteronomy 30 11 through 20. Deuteronomy 30, 11 through 20. I'll read this, this statement that really kind of wraps this, this, this week up. Uh, and it's, it's about thoughts that make a huge impact on you. Now, I'd like, I want to read this and make sure y'all get this point. I can make you rise or fall. I can work for you or against you. I can make you a success or failure. I control the way you feel and the way you act. I can make you laugh, work, love. I can make your heart swing, sing with joy, excitement, elation. Or I can make you wretched, dejected, morbid. I can make you sick, listless. I can be as a shackle, heavy, attached, burdensome. Or I can be as the prism's hue, dancing, bright, feeling, Fleeting, lost forever unless captured by pen or purpose. I can be nurtured or grown to be great and beautiful, seen by the eyes of others through action in you. I can never be removed, only replaced. I am a thought. Why not know me better? So we challenge this week. So what are you thinking? Are you thinking clearly? Are you thinking carefully? Are you thinking correctly? That's our, our study this week. A man in his mind, or in my case, the lack thereof. Uh, I hope to see you next week. Uh, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in Him.